So listen to this. What would happen if Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world, became a footballer? Because we all know that speed is the most overpowered attribute you can have in this sport and don't get it wrong, no footballer in history could ever possibly beat Usain Bolt in a straight race. I really need everyone to understand this before going on with the video. Bolt is simply the fastest man to ever live. Back in his prime, he literally got the feeling that he could walk the 100 meters in less than 10 seconds. So if you ever believed one of those social media posts claiming that Bale or Mbappe ran faster than him, I'm sorry to tell you that you're a victim. A victim of misinformation. It's okay, don't feel too bad. We all are these days, but yeah, most of the time they're comparing the player's top speed to Bolt's average speed, which is just absurdly unfair and only makes it even funnier that they still struggle to beat him. In reality, if you took Bolt's top speed as well, it becomes quite clear that no one else stands a chance. I mean, the guy is literally named Bolt. Bolt. Do you really think some Welsh guy named Gareth? could outrun him. Okay, maybe that's not the greatest point, but look, if you want a better perspective of just how fast he is, well, the fastest footballers in the world are set to run 100 meters in about 11 seconds, which would only get them to the semi-finals in the Olympics. The women's semi-finals. So yeah, now that we're all on the same track, ironic, I think it's easy to understand why everyone was always so hyped when the man himself started flirting with the idea that he could put on a pair of cleats. Because you see, growing up, it's not like running was Usain's dream, in fact, his favorite sports were football and cricket. In a way, it almost upset him that he was such a prodigy because once he turned 12 and began breaking records left and right, his coach would not even allow him to play other sports, especially football, because one tough injury could ruin his track and field career forever. Still, that never stopped him from sneaking out so he could play and thankfully it also didn't stop him from becoming the GOAT. And 10 years later than 22 and already a three-time gold medalist, Bolt was suddenly one of the most famous people on the planet, so he sort of realized he could do whatever the hell he wanted now and to him that meant one thing football. Before you knew it, you were seeing him all around Europe, hanging out with all the biggest clubs and every time he made sure to drop some strange quotes. First, being a huge Man United fan, his agent got him the chance to join them for one of their training sessions, even coaching CR7 on a track and then coming out to greet the crowd at Old Trafford, but apparently that wasn't enough for him since right before the match, he surprised everyone saying, I'm really looking forward to the match, I'm actually thinking about trying to make the squad too, and just as everyone thought it was only a joke, he then added, I'm left footed so I think I could be good on the flank, after all I'm pretty quick so we'll see. This was maybe the first time Bolt ever hinted that he actually did have an interest in becoming a professional footballer, and then it kind of just didn't stop. A few months later he visited Real Madrid, even took the kickoff at a friendly match and then claimed he would be faster than Ronaldo even with a ball at his feet, which is definitely arguable. A year after that he visited Bayern's camp and repeatedly made references to the fact that he was a decent schoolboy footballer, joking that his touch wasn't the best but then adding that I am going to try to work on it and maybe next season I can play at Bayern, which again was just not realistic. Regardless, no matter how strange these quotes may seem now, back then then, they were honestly kind of charming, everyone just thought he was joking, but well, then came the 2011 Champions League final, where Bolt showed up as a guest and finally dropped the bomb, saying, I really think I want to try football after I retire, I've watched it for years and I think I definitely have a chance to play for Man United. This was already pretty out of touch, especially considering that United had just lost the final, but it only became worse when he added that people say it's not realistic, but nobody has seen me play, so you never know. If Alex Ferguson saw me, he might think I could replace Ryan Gase. And yeah, it was exactly at this point that the whole thing went from charming to completely delusional. Because as much as Bolt is indeed faster than all these football players, running on the track and running on the pitch require completely different skill sets. While Bolt can run 100 meters in a straight line faster than everyone else, then he needs a rest, while footballers not only do they rarely need to run more than 40 meters at a time, they do that several times a match and almost never in an actual straight line. Nothing proves this point better than the fact that Ronaldo was once tested against a professional sprinter and while he obviously did lose while running in a straight line, he destroyed them.
running in a zigzag. Sprinters are just not prepared to endure those kinds of circumstances. In fact, their obsession with form only makes them even more stiff, which in Bolt's case should be especially notorious because don't forget, Bolt is 195 centimeters tall and sure, so is Latan, but their proportions are not the same at all. Bolt is some seriously long legs, his center of gravity is way too high, it's damn near impossible to be elegant or even quick on your feet when you have that kind of body type. No wonder he had already left the disclaimer that his touch wasn't the best. And we're still ignoring a lot of things from the mental aspect of the game to the fact that sprinters are not known for their stamina and even that Bolt is a notoriously slow starter. If any Olympic sprinter was to make it as a footballer, it surely would not be Bolt. But let me tell you, that did not stop him from trying or embarrassing himself even further. A year later, in a documentary about his preparation for the Olympics, there was even a scene where, despite having been strictly forbidden from playing football by his coach, at one point he just does it regardless and even looks at the camera saying, and I quote, Yo, Alex Ferguson, just watch, today is my trial. And then telling the crew to make sure Alex Ferguson gets this tape. Only to then join a bunch of locals playing in a dirt pitch and go completely unnoticed against average people. But somehow, it just never seemed to realize that he just wasn't that talented at football. In fact, his overconfidence seemed to repeatedly fool people into joining this charade. In 2014, the Jamaican national team coach even claimed that he wanted him to join the national team, saying, Football is easy, I hear that he's not bad and I'm sure he can make him very good, maybe the best in counter-attacks, nobody can stop him, he's very fast, that's clear, and if we teach him how to handle the ball, then he would be one of our best players. After the Olympics, I want to see him here in training, that's what I've been telling him. <sighs> Our guy who worked as a scout at Mönchengladbach and even a coach at Stuttgart managed to say something as absurd as this. I don't know, I almost hope that the Jamaican newspapers twisted his words, but nevertheless, once it hit the mainstream it was too late and of course Bolt made sure to add more wood to the fire, replying to a post on Instagram saying, anything is possible. Meaning that once he retired from track and field in 2017, just as the Jamaican national team missed out on qualification to the 2018 World Cup, the hype train went into overdrive drive, with Usain himself even going as far as saying, I think I can make the Jamaica team easily, I wouldn't say they're very good at this point. Which is just kind of a rude thing to say about your own country, honestly, but regardless, don't think he stopped there. Bolt's obsession with Man United seemed to repeatedly defeat his own good judgement, leading him to, at one point, call out Mourinho for not giving him a chance, saying, Mourinho will one day see my talent and choose me, and then bringing Sir Alex into the mix, claiming he had promised him a chance saying he told him, get into shape and we'll see where that goes, which honestly just sounds like Sir Alex's best attempt at not being mean. Still, at that point, despite having an invitation to join Dortmund for a training session, he decided to start his gigantic media circus instead, training with the Mamelodi Sundowns, one of the biggest clubs in South Africa, even claiming in a press conference that he was ready to start taking football seriously, and then posting a video on social media announcing that he had signed for a club and that the deal would be made public in a matter of days, leading to huge speculation that he would indeed sign with the Sundowns, especially after they posted a picture of Bolt with the caption, football will never be the same, only for it to turn out to just be some internet bait, some kind of marketing gimmick to promote his appearance at that year's soccer aid. At least, he'd finally be playing at Old Trafford, I guess. Nevertheless, before that even took place and after much back and forth, he finally joined Dortmund for training, setting the stakes extremely high right from the start, claiming that this trial would determine what I do with my career, and then with 1500 fans in the stands and some serious media coverage, he came into the pitch, did some drills, played in a makeshift match, and hey, not only did he score a header from one of Gotz's crosses, but he even managed to put the ball in between one of the player's legs, which surely got the fans going, but as much as Bolt would insist that his performance had been a 7 out of 10 and that he would like to continue playing with the team, well, let's just say that manager Peter Stoger wasn't so optimistic. I mean, he seemed to be trying to be nice, but he was very clearly not impressed, saying that if he wants to make it at the highest level, he has a lot of work to do. The physique he needed for sprinting is nothing like what he'd need for football, and at his age, there's not much space for development, because keep in mind, Bolt was already 32 years old. Yeah. Honestly, at this point, there were already a lot of people getting fed up with Bolt's antics, calling this whole thing a marketing stunt and claiming that Stoger had no intention of ever keeping him in. To be fair, they probably had a point. Not only was Puma Bolt's main sponsor, but they were also the kit supplier and one of the main shareholders of Dortmund, so think what you will, I guess. 
Regardless, I'm guessing Bolt's confidence took a bit of a hit after Stoker's statement since out of nowhere he began training with Norwegian clubs from Gotsa, claiming he was only trying to get himself in shape for soccer aid, which was now only a few weeks away, but then he beat off a bit more than he could shoe and ended up joining them for a match against the Norwegian under-19 national team and it was a disaster really, that might have been the first time Bolt didn't look fast, he just kept losing the ball and overall getting bullied by a bunch of teenagers. By the end of his 20 minute cameo, his main highlight was wasting a chance to tie the match, but no matter what, once he joined the other celebrities training for the Soccer 8 match, inevitably some clips of him scoring in practice ended up going viral and before you knew it, he was playing as the captain of the World 11 and to be fair to him, he wasn't awful this time around. Though he did waste every chance he had, he did get an offside goal and even hit the bar once, which is something, but to be honest, I think the most embarrassing thing of all was how the organization went through all the trouble of tracking everyone's speeds, only for a ball to end up not being the one with the highest top speed, being outdone by Mofara, one of the greatest long distance runners of all time, which, again, just proved the kind of speed Bolt had just wasn't suitable for football. Even stranger, they gave him the man of the match award, or I guess, oversized watch, despite the fact that no one really seemed to think that he was the best on the pitch, or I guess someone did, because after that match, it finally happened. Usain Bolt signed for a football team, the Central Coast Mariners, the last place team in the Australian League. Right upon arrival, Bolt's obsession with Man United would come up again, with him strangely maintaining that playing for Man United was his biggest dream, and then thanking the Mariners for allowing him to start that dream there, which made it feel like he was using them as a stepping stone. But nevertheless, the most important takeaway from that first interview was that he claimed he had gotten offers from Spain and France, and that only decided to move to Australia instead, because he felt that in Europe the media would be all over him, which honestly kind of made sense. Bolt needed some place where he could get the time he needed to develop his game as far from the spotlight as he could possibly get, while the Australian League was a competition in desperate need of the inevitable public attention that Bolt could bring them. But while at surface level this seemed like the perfect fit, once you really put your mind to it, there's a clear conflict of interest here. As the Mariner CEO said, it may take weeks or even months for him to reach the level of a professional, who knows? Regardless, we've been selling a lot of memberships, there's a lot of inquiries about where to buy tickets and the commercial sponsors have already started calling in. As you see, Bolt had moved to Australia trying to escape the spotlight, but the only reason they welcomed him was that they were decided to make sure the spotlight followed them there. So it was all bound to fail and the criticism came very fast, while most fans were just poking fun at the idea that some club had actually signed Bolt, joking that they'd probably play in a 901 formation. Adam Taggart, a Perth Glory player, claimed that they'd be better off giving that chance to a teenager, lamenting for the up-and-coming player who'd miss out on his spot over a marketing push. While commentator Simon Hill was a lot harsher, saying, if it's just a marketing stunt, then great, but if they're being serious, no, please, the guy is brilliant of an athlete as he was, he is no footballer. If we are going to go down that road, then we're reducing the league to a sideshow, a circus freak show, a gimmick. We don't need that. The league is a serious competition. If we are going to spend money on big stars, then let's get some proper signings, not this. And well, then Bolt finally played his first preseason friendly and to the shock of no one, he looked out of his depth. His first touch was especially atrocious, another Perth Glory player, Andy Kioff, literally said that it was like a trampoline and then added that he is not gonna be able to make it and said that the whole stunt was a kick in the teeth of the professionals in the league and a farce. Thankfully for Bolt, his second match went a lot smoother, even scoring twice, with the first goal actually being quite a good strike, but the same problems were still there and he even wasted a clear chance to score the hat-trick, which was kind of embarrassing. Still, he insisted it was a positive, claiming he had already improved in every area, but if at the start the Australian FA had even helped fund the move, he was still technically only on trial and with Maltese club Valletta approaching him with an actual contract offer and all the criticism piling up, the Mariners felt pressure to make a decision and though they did end up offering him a definitive contract, it all just collapsed because in the end, without extra funding, the Mariners offered him 150k a year, which considering that Bolt's fortune is estimated to be around 100 million, 
family and meant that he'd be virtually playing for free and suddenly, for some reason, it seemed Bolt's love for football wasn't as pure as it may have seemed before, as he rejected their offer the moment he realized that his demands of 3 million a year would not be met. And so, only 3 months after arriving, not only was Bolt leaving already, but he would make sure to make his exit as messy as possible, going on an interview and sort of blaming the Australian league for his failures, saying, Now I realize that I should have stayed in Europe. The level of football in Australia just wasn't good. Which, considering that at the eyes of everyone else it was Usain who wasn't up to the level of football there, the backlash was a bit savage, with Simon Hill adding that the level of football in the league certainly wasn't good when Bolt was playing, that's for sure. And another journalist going as far as tweeting, this is laughable from Usain Bolt. I was there reporting and watching for training sessions and he was garbage. He's a Sunday league footballer at the very best and not a good one either. <laughs> I'm guessing these comments finally opened his eyes a bit because after this, Bolt not only admitted that playing in Australia had been harder than he anticipated, but he would also say that he had given up on trying to become a footballer, though only a year later he'd be back on the press running his mouth, insisting that he never got a fair chance, when in reality he got a much better chance than anyone else would possibly ever get. And of course, he also made sure to bring up Man United once again, saying, I've always watched them and I know some players, I'm not gonna name names, you know them, but yeah. If they can play football, I can probably do it too. <laughs> Regardless, after that disaster, no other club gave him much attention and the funniest development we got ever since was that he admitted that even when he played as a kid in school, he was a goalkeeper, which somehow doesn't shock me. 